and welcome to Carfile. Now this week we're looking at the Mercedes C-Class, the stalwart from Germany that every executive wants to drive. Well, at least at some point on the ladder. But some would say buying one is putting brains before beauty. Hmm, a can of worms, methinks. Oh, isn't it gorgeous? Just look at it. Brand new today. The way the, the circle is just, you know, well, round and the, the points, they, they meet the edges perfectly there. It's even got a little, a little stick here. And it kind of wobbles on its little stick. It's just beautiful. Oh, and you get um, you get one of these as well. Car. It is in fact the new Mercedes C-Class. And whereas its bigger brother, the S-Class, which this does look suspiciously like, is more likely to find itself living in a place with a drive, well, rather like this one, the C-Class is one strictly for suburbia. Traditionally, Mercedes have not been aimed at the likes of me. I get bored of anything within six months, cars, three months. Mercedes are traditionally aimed at people who keep them for millennia. In fact, Mercedes are delighted to say that they've got about 3,000 orders already taken for this car before it goes on sale and before the people who are buying it have even seen it. That's because they've always bought Mercedes and they always will buy Mercedes, whatever they're like. You could put Mercedes on your old Coke can and sell it. Now, I know it's still the budget end of the Mercedes range, but there is something very comforting about knowing that you're sitting in a car that is no bigger than a Mondeo and actually needn't cost that much more than a top-end one, but it's better built than your house and will probably be around a lot longer. It's actually longer than the previous C-Class, but because of its shape, it looks smaller, more compact, and that is translated in the drive. Whilst not exactly feeling tiny, it does feel a lot more nimble than the outgoing model. And it is a vaguely sporting experience. I say vaguely because, well, don't expect it to romp away madly. Easy choice of engine. This is the 200, which means it gets a two litre with a supercharger and about 163 brake horsepower. That translates, if you're interested in figures, to 0 to 60 in 9.3 seconds, which is quite respectable. The 180 has a 2 litre engine, and then it all gets a bit confusing because there's a 2.6 in the 230, the 3.2 litre V6 in the 320. Who cares? You're not going to remember them anyway. This is the kind of mid range, probably one of the better sellers, and it does feel pretty strong, but it is still a Mercedes, so Sir and Modem are asked to restrain from anything that's too verging on the hooliganry. Steering and suspension have been completely revised. The old one on Mercedes used to be recirculating ball. Something that I would have thought put you in hospital, but apparently it steers your car. It's now rack and pinion, which is much better. The newly revised suspension is, well, it's definitely on the firm side of yielding, shall we say, but that adds to the kind of sporty feeling. And whilst we're on the subject of things firm, the seats, typical Mercedes, you settle down and think, ooh, that's a bit hard, but actually, if you're on a longer journey, you will find they do start to adapt to the shape of, well, your bum, and make the whole thing a bit more comfortable for a longer trip. Another refreshing change comes in the fact that standard specification will be slightly higher than has been traditional with older Mercedes, where even wheel nuts would have cost you extra. You'll even find a six-speed manual gearbox as standard or you can opt for the five-speed automatic that we've got in our test car, which is, well, a little on the slushy side. Mercedes say, though, that they've answered critics of their previous manual gearboxes and their six-speeder is a lot sharper. That coupe-esque silhouette has another advantage apart from looking good. It does mean that it doesn't create as much drag, which, of course, in turn, brings benefits in fuel consumption. Mercedes, in making their changes for the new C-Class, have dumped the old round dials, and we've got this kind of half moon affair with a needle that cranks its way around the speedo set firmly in the middle. You wouldn't want to know about anything as vulgar as revs after all. And I'm not sure. I don't like it. I prefer round dials. But that's just me. This is a crucial car for Mercedes. It's their big seller. They expect to sell thousands upon thousands of these. There's no word from Mercedes yet on prices, but expect it to be competitive. They're keeping quiet as of now, I suspect because they don't want BMW to turn around and knock a couple of hundred quid off every model and claim to be cheaper. It will sell. 
No doubt about it, just the three-pointed star on the front would see to that. But the difference is, this is a C-Class that you might just find desirable and not just the Tweedy set. Whereas the old one was very much a hyacinth bouquet to BMW's slinky Claudia Schiffer 3 Series, this new C-Class hits back with a naughty little Anacorna Cova. It looks a lot better and is a lot faster too. Watch out BMW. Now with the regular C-Class, it is a little dull for your taste, why not try something with a bit more style, the SLK? It would take a hard-hearted soul, or maybe a wig wearer, not to fall in love with the idea of a convertible car once the summer sun arrives. Let's face it, even in this drizzly country, we love our soft tops. Um, yes, excuse me, hello? In fact, you only have to change two letters to get from soft tops to soft spots. Quite an interesting point, I thought, when it comes to the beloved little com Yes, hello? Excuse me? If there's one thing we like probably as much, if not more than, a car with a soft top, it's a car with a prestige badge. So why not try and combine the two? Which this, as you've noticed, does, yes, very well indeed. It's the Mercedes SLK, but it's the entry-level 200 compressor. And yes, all right, we'll drive it. The only thing I can't promise is the sun. It passes the first test with flying colours. Yes, it does look good. From the back, it could be pretty much any standard Mercedes saloon until you see it with the top down. From the front, it's perky but purposeful, and those deep slab sides give it a very distinctive image. But is it any good to drive? So what do you get in £26,000 worth of Mini Merc? Well, a two-litre compressor engine, which I'm told puts out 163 brake horsepower, but if I'm honest, it really doesn't feel like it. Brown town, okay, get out on country roads and it's not exactly exciting. It all goes through a six-speed gearbox, which is not very nice at all. Gripes aside, no doubt about it, it does definitely draw on the good looks of its bigger relative, the SL drop top. Mind you, one worry is if you buy a car to look good with its prestige badge and glamorous image, then when you're driving around town, you want to do so smoothly. The problem here is we've got a rather annoying two-position, very spongy clutch and a very numb-feeling throttle, which means when we pull away, it goes like this. Hang on to your coffee cup. <laughs> In fact, I've been making a bit of a gaffe, a horribly embarrassing blunder by referring to the little SLK as a soft top, because technically speaking, well it isn't. And if you haven't already seen the incredibly clever roof mechanism on the SLK, then you're about to. And believe me, if you've got any recollections of old convertibles like little Spitfires and Midgets where you spent half an hour breaking your fingernails off on annoying little Prestons, none of that's involved. And the end result, when the hood is up, well, it doesn't look like a hood, not like some soft tops where it looks a bit weak. In the case of this, it looks great and it's very cosy. To say it's not a Mercedes, well, that's a little bit harsh, because it is, it says so on the front. To say it's not a sports car, well, that's different, because certainly if you want a taut, finely tuned little racing car for the real driving enthusiast, you'll be looking elsewhere. If, though, you have a hankering for a miniature SL, a touch of Hollywood glamour but scaled down, then this could well be it. And after all, we all love a touch of glamour, and we all love a convertible. Well, that's all for part one, but after the break, we look at the C-Class Estate, C-Class Sport, and we go head to head with the BMW 318i. Well, now it's time to up the pace a little bit as the old pro Chris Goffey test drives the C-Class Sport. Mercedes customers are an incredibly loyal bunch. Once they've bought that three-pointed star, they tend to stick with it. I should know, I've driven Mercs for the last seven years and my current steed has just covered 160,000 miles. Why do we like them? Well, build quality, strength and durability. My old E-Class will go on for another 100,000, I'm sure. It used to be residual value, but that's been pretty savagely knocked over the last few years. And today you can't really say, hand on heart, that the second-hand values are all that much better than the competition. The trouble with the traditional Mercedes buyer is that they're a dying breed. The customer base is too old. 
and Mercedes customers tend to hang on to their cars far too long for a manufacturer's comfort, especially a manufacturer who's in the sort of financial trouble that Mercedes is in now they've bought Chrysler. Hence the need for this, the new C-Class Sports Coupe, a smaller, lighter, cheaper Mercedes that makes a real fashion statement. A car designed and marketed to pull back some of those BMW 3 Series sales and some of those younger buyers who care more about image and performance than they do about reliability and long life. The generous glass sunroof that gives the illusion of almost a convertible. The roof slides back over the top of the rear roof. Not a new idea. I remember my RX-7 Mazda doing that many years ago. Nevertheless, looks good and uh, there's not too much turbulence at speed. Although a little bit more drumming with the roof wide open than you might prefer at speed on the Autobahn. Inside, well, as you'd expect for a Mercedes, a quality looking materials, the plastic trim looks nice. Uh, the aluminium trim round the centre of the console here is good. But as for the rest of it, well, it's unrelieved gloom of too much black carpet and dark grey in the seats. Although the seats themselves are very supportive and very comfortable. In the back here, well, not a huge amount of legroom as you'd expect for a compact coupe, but nevertheless, full size seats and uh, a decent amount of legroom if uh, small adults or children are going long distance. This car is fitted with the Mercedes Sequatronic gearbox. It's one of these new trendy paddle shift operations, no clutch and an electronic control for the gear shift itself. Firstly, I'm not convinced. I prefer either a proper automatic or for screaming up and down the south of France coals, a clutch lever and a gear shift. The coupe we drove, a 230 compressor, could break the eight second barrier in the 0-60 dash and go on to a maximum of around 150 miles an hour. There's also a 1.8 litre petrol, a 2 litre supercharged and, unusually for a sports car, a 2.3 diesel engine, which is only marginally slower than the supercharged petrol car and much more economical. When Mercedes launched the CLK Coupe, it was an instant success and they discovered they got a classic on their hands. They're obviously hoping that the same sort of magic is going to rub off on this coupe, the new C-Class coupe. If it works or not depends on how the car is perceived. After all, they're after an awful lot of Conquest sales. They say 65% of people who buy the 4,500 of these on sale in the UK will be newcomers to Mercedes. How will it be seen in the market though? As a cheap Mercedes coupe or a very expensive Citroen Zara competitor? Style, something often linked with cars, sporty, fashionable cars, but not often associated with estate cars. Until now, because now we seem to have the stylish estate cars, things like the Alfa Romeo Sport Wagon, and this one from Mercedes. Lifestyle estate, another lifestyle estate. What lifestyle? What if your lifestyle involves sitting in front of the telly a lot, eating chips, not going anywhere, or carrying really, really huge stuff around? Then it's not going to be any use to you, is it? I kind of think I know what they mean. I think they're talking about those people who drive up and down the motorway with surfboards and skis and canoes strapped to the top of their car. Personally, I think the best thing for all of them would be to be made to strap their surfboards onto a skateboard and pump that at the M6, but Never mind. Mercedes claim that their new C-Class is finding brand new Merc customers all over the country, and a lot of them young, which is exactly what they want to achieve with the car. And it certainly does look younger, brighter and fresher than any other Merc.
It's available with six engines, amongst which are two diesels, one of which has five cylinders and delivers 170 brake. Anyway, this is a 3.2 litre V6 petrol version, which is even more powerful and even more fun, obviously. Both the C-Class Estate and its lovely little sister, the Sport Coupe, were not simply rehashed versions of the C-Class Saloon upon which they are based. They were both designed at the same time as the Saloon, and so can claim to be cars in their own right, which does shine through in the very finished design. It may be sporty and lifestyle, but it is still a Mercedes, so it is still quite popular. You do want to get a fair bit of kit for your money, and they're not as tight as they used to be. You get automatic climate control, snazzy leather trim on the steering wheel, this nice aluminium effect on the dashboard. You can start uh, adding the odd bit on, obviously, and it can start getting a bit expensive if you want to put leather into it, if you want to go for fully electric seats. But then, it is a prestige motor. After all, nobody ever sang, oh lord, won't you buy me a Peridua Nipper? Hmm, I think there's probably a very good reason for that. Now, so far, we have majored on the performance and the looks of the thing, but it is still a practical estate car, and it does still have a big boot, though not the biggest. And more importantly, things like this flat load lip, so you can get in very easily. When these are folded down, you have a completely flat load space. It's got a very nifty and sturdy-looking luggage cover for once, and best of all, a stylish shopping crate. Now, now, I've really arrived. Mercedes are currently expending huge amounts of energy in desperately trying to shed their rather fuddy-duddy image and appeal to a younger buyer. And with their ever-expanding range and the arrival of the new C-Class, they're doing a very good job of it. No doubt about it, people want to buy these sporty, lifestyle little estates. This one starts from, what, 22,000 and rises to about 37 for this version with all the bells and whistles on, which isn't too bad. You have got to consider, though, that the Alfa Romeo Sport Wagon starts for thousands less than the cheapest version of this, but then this is still a Mercedes and still feels, drives and looks like a Mercedes. So we've seen how the C-Class performs on its own, but what about head-to-head -head with the BMW 318i? Richard Hammond has got a fight on his hands. Ooh, this is going to be a bloody one. So the hot hatches bicker amongst themselves as to who can shave an extra tenth of a second off the 0 to 60 time. And the big luxury barges bicker of the benefits of sat nav over a seat massager. But this is where the real battle takes place. Here between these middle class, mid range, middle lane motorway mile munchers, both reps chariots and both from manufacturers hungry for your tick in the box next to their motor on the company car lists. So we have the BMW 318SE and facing up to it, still fresh and youthful, the new Mercedes C180, both only a couple of steps up from cooking versions of the basic cars. Mercedes are after BMW's championship belt and they look like they mean business. They both look great, both are hand carved from one lump of granite and will last thousands of years. Mileages to raise the eyebrow of a spaceship captain will be perfectly achievable without anything ever going wrong. Well, more or less. But we've got to choose between them. So, let battle commence. Mercedes used to have a reputation for being incredibly mean. It was all you could do to get a key fob out of them when you bought what is still an expensive car. Now though, they've addressed that and clearly they've been tracking BMW with this, the C-Class, because the spec is very similar. In fairly basic version, we get pretty much everything you need as standard. I've got a multi-function steering wheel that allows me to control the telephone and the radio and bits and pieces like that. A fairly elaborate and clever automatic climate control. Cruise control is standard. They have their stability control system to keep things on the straight and narrow. And so to the BMW 318 where we get, oh look, cruise control and automatic climate control and elaborate stereo. It does feel sharp and eager. But it doesn't exactly feel exciting. In this lesser powered version, it feels perhaps a little bit numb. The gearbox isn't exactly exhilarating. We've only got five speeds as opposed to the six in the Mercedes C-Class. It probably doesn't feel as sharp as the BMW. Mercedes seldom do. But considering it is a small Mercedes, it is a huge improvement on old ones 
and still a good car to drive. The huge discounts given to big corporate buyers are, of course, denied the humble private buyer, but that's another story. The result is that though margins may be squeezed to the bone, the numbers sold are huge. For what it's worth, not that many people will be digging into their own pockets to buy these things, the BMW costs £20,130 in this form. Bear in mind it is slightly better equipped than the Mercedes C180 Classic, which chips in at a slightly more weighty £20,740, both on the road. The BMW is still excellent. It looks great, it's still good to drive, it's got everything you need on board. The problem is, quite a lot of people seem to agree with you, and the old blue and white propeller badge is in danger of becoming a victim of its own success. They made them so good, everybody bought the things, and now, well, in some parts of the world, they could be seen as anything in common. Oh dear. Whereas the Mercedes, well, that's an entirely different prospect. Pitching up for your four o'clock in Wigan, peering at the world through the three-pointed star at the end of the bonnet might just help you stand out from the crowd a little. Sure, it's not ultimately as fast and sharp handling as the BMW, but the payoff is less crashing suspension and a far more comfortable ride. A million BMW 3 Series were sold a couple of years ago in 1999. That's a lot. Now, it might deny you any chances of exclusivity, but it is an indication that BMW must be doing something right. With their new C-Class, Mercedes want those sales. If not all of them, then quite a lot of them. And they deserve them. We'll see what happens. Well, that's all for this week on Carfile, but we're back next week with a bit of a blast as we're looking at performance cars from Toyota. We'll see you then.